Hey guys, welcome back to Hollow Knight. You might be asking, hey, why am I here in the City of Tears? Well, in the last episode, uh, we did a bunch of stuff. We started exploring Queen's Gardens. Uh, and then at the end of the episode, I ended up tacking on a bunch of stuff because I remember there's a lot of things we had to do in Dirtmouth. Uh, and then one thing that I realized that we also had to do that I decided to just save for this episode because the last one was getting long was go get, um... The final nail upgrade because we have uh, more that we have um, you need at least 4,000 geo and three pale ore and that's what we have um, and while I'm over here I also want to grab this whispering root that I um, have not gotten uh, let's see it's down here god okay Uh, here we go. Um, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to show that. I don't think I'm going to show me collecting these just because it's kind of long and tedious. So I'll meet you when we're at the next step. And if you're having trouble with this one, just keep in mind that those little rooms on the side still count as this room, and some orbs will be in there. Promised plenty. Souls to serve. Soul twisted. Ooh, interesting. <gasps> and now to climb up to the nailsmith, we're just gonna go the cool guy's way and climb all the way up here. Ah, mm. Oh, Stendhal. you returned. I see you have some pale ore. A rare fine metal, that. Give me the ore and some geo for my efforts, and I'll reforge your nail to make it stronger. Juncha. As you wish, I'll get to work then. It's done. The reforging is done. Your nail is much stronger than it used to be. As strong as it could ever be. In only your weapon I have seen such potential. Finally, I behold the majesty of a pure nail. To think this moment has come upon me so soon. I... I must step outside for a moment. Well... There it is, the pure nail, the ultimate weapon of Hollow Nest. Crafted to perfection, this ancient nail reveals its true form. This is the strongest nail in the game. Nothing past this. Ah, With the pure nail the forged, my work in this lifetime comes to an end. My only remaining desire is to see and feel the nail strike true. I beg you, cut me down. As my final moment in life, I want to taste the blade's exquisite, exquisite edge. After all this time, all this toil, haven't I earned it? So you're presented with a bit of a choice here. You can, in one hit from the nail, kill the nailsmith and have his body flow in the waters below. Or you can leave him be and you can spare him. Um, you will get an achievement, uh, no matter which option you do. There's an achievement for both of them. If you decide to kill him, you will get the purity achievement. However, there is another achievement you can get that I will not, uh, mention just because we'll be seeing it later and it kind of spoils what happens when you spare him. I don't know how long, like, I don't know what triggers him to leave this place like, you know, if you decide to just leave, and then, you know, because he, he's just going to be standing here, and we can just go and come back, but at a certain point, he will then disappear and end up somewhere else. I don't know what exactly triggers that. Um, I think we can dream nail him, though. Oh, no, we can't, actually. So, yeah, you can kill him and get the purity achievement and end his long road, his long obsessive road to crafting the perfect nail. Or we can let him live the rest of his life and find a new meaning. I'd say that's a happier ending. Wouldn't you say? There's one other thing I wanted to do. Uh, we're over here at the Blue Lake. 
uh, you might want to come here after d destroying Monomon, because you'll find Quirrell here. Go on, Again we meet, my short friend. Here at last, I feel at peace. Twice I've seen this world, and through my service, may have and, and though my service may have stripped the first experience from me, I'm thankful I could witness its beauty again. Hellenes is a vast and wondrous thing, but with a, as many wonders as it holds, I've seen qu none quite so intriguing as you. Ha, ah, my flattery returns only silent stoicism. I like that. I like that very much. Incredible. Wait, hang on, can I just... Oh, yeah. So, we can't talk to him anymore if we dream nail him. To live an age, yet remember so little. Perhaps I should be thankful. All tragedy erased. I see only wonders. And so, yeah. You can just sit here with him. In this very peaceful area. This is a pretty good background, to be honest. <laughs> if you want to screenshot this, I like this. Um... So yeah, so the thing with Quirrell is that you want to, you know, find him in every area that he appears in, and then I think you get an achievement for it. Let me fact check that real quick. Okay, so yeah, so by coming here, and um, I think that I, you actually only need to just see me here, you will get the witness achievement. So if we leave the room and come back. All that's left is his nail. One can only wonder what have happened. Damn, I love that character. Also, while we're here at the Blue Lake, something I never did, because I think when we came here, I didn't have the uh, Super Dash. Are we going to Super Dash across? And there's actually a few little things here. Oh! Oh, yeah, there's Tiso. Gah, what a calm place. It's action I want. Vicious and deadly battle. This serenity is a bore. That place calls to me. Somewhere beyond this lake, perhaps? So yeah, if you haven't uh, put it together, um, he's looking for the Coliseum, and I guess I forgot to find him here, but I think now, once you've seen him here, if you go to the Coliseum, uh, you can find, like, um, I forget what, like, his shell, maybe, but yeah, um... I'm just saying it now just because I have a feeling I'll forget, but yeah, uh, after the Coliseum, he kind of dies. <laughs> he kind of talks all that shit about um, being awesome. Not to the extent that Zote does, but still, he kind of talks shit, and then he just kind of dies. Reminds me of the kind of people that you fight in online games. <laughs> Um, maybe that's what he's supposed to represent. Anyway, um, so yeah, up there is a blood sack, if you want that. Um, I know there's one other thing. Past the lake. Go this way. Yep, there's a platform right above, um, this charm shop. And I think... It's hard to get to, but I think you can actually... Huh? Yeah, now we can get back up here. So, yeah, I just wanted to show uh, that, too. Oh, and yeah, now that we've left the room, Tiso is gone. So, yeah. And we're finally back uh, where we ended that other episode. Mask fly. Got him. <laughs> uh, one thing I also want to point out, I think I, well, I put it in the editing in that episode, but uh, there's a big old king statue there. Um, oh, i got to haul it back to the... Relic guy. Alright, anyway. So now we're gonna explore the rest of Queen's Gardens. Obviously, there's not a whole lot of time left in this episode, but we're gonna explore what we can. What we can. Um, so down here, this gate was not uh, open before. I was trying to find my way out of here um, when I in the last episode when I saw... At the end of the last episode when I saw that um did not have the fucking... What's it called? The map? Um, there was, I think... Yeah, like, there it is. There's the switch, uh, and then there's just a breakable floor here that you come out of. Um, there's a little bit of a platforming challenge down there. I'm not going to do it again because it's annoying. Um, okay, so we have two little ways to go. Uh, let's go this way. Let's see what we can see. Ow. You know, I probably should have changed my charms. Hang on one second. Alright, this is a good build, I think. And we're back. Okay. Uh, we got around here. 
Ooh. Yeah, lots and lots of thorns. And oh, it's one of these. Oh, all right. There we go. Okay. Simple so far. Alright, that was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. That, that like, flowed very well. Uh, let's see what the roof has to say. Oh, wait, hang on, is there a... Oh, okay. It looked like there was a little, like, way to move in there, but nope. Okay. Listen, buddy. Leaves in splendor, pale root. Hmm, pale root. Yes, I mean, I mean pale king. Um, let's see over here. So over here we have actually explored because this is where we came up from. Uh, what's it called? Oh, money. Actually, wait. Uh, have we explored this? Let's see. Over here we have this. Area that you can only get into if you have Eastmas Tear, and it has this enemy. Oop. That was a Mantis Trader. Once a member of the Mantis tribe, now cast out and driven mad by infection. So, yes, the tribe that Cloth was talking about was actually more Mantises. Uh, or Manti, maybe? Uh, also, the little. There's little boys. We got the extended entry for those. Forgot to bring it up. They spend their whole lives hiding or fleeing. How sad. Or perhaps it, it that is the life they choose for themselves and they enjoy it? It's strange, though. It's a strange thought, but not impossible. The thing about this is that they talk about the moss fly being, like, fearful and fleeing. The moss fly chases after you. Albeit really slow and not threatening, but still. Uh, anyway, so Mantis Traders, they have two attacks. This straightforward lunge, which is pretty badass. And then they have one where they shoot up and then uh, fly diagonally downwards at you. Um, over here we have a big boy who holds the love key. And another one came out. Too long spent together, we became as one. Yeah, that's a very mysterious husk. As you see, he um, is one of the higher up from the City of Tears. And I don't know if the item he holds has to do with what he says. Uh, and you might be thinking, well, it's called the Love Key. It has something to do with love. He spent too much time with his wife or something. But no, the Love Key is something different. You'll see. Um, this enemy right here, you can actually kill with spells. Uh... Should we do that? Yeah, why not? Durandu. Simple walking creature, creature encased in a hard shell, often found walking in shallow pools of acidic water. To be seven more for the entry, wow. Um, so we break this, and now we can get into here, and we are in the room where the Moss Prophet was. So, yeah. Alright, so we're back up here. Uh, let's see what else is around here. Um... There's some ways down here. Got more Mantis Petras. Okay, I didn't have my jump. bench this way. Okay, let's go there. Ow. 
Is this... Oh, hey. This is uh, actually... Whoa. This leads to Deep Nest. This is where we actually came from when we went to Deep Nest and found this area, if you remember. Uh, so yeah, if you want to go to Deep Nest from here, well, there you go. Be my guest. Uh, what's over here, though? Oh, yeah, this. For 150, 150 Geo, you can spawn a bench here. This is one of my favorite benches in the game. Oh, yeah, and then that thing turns on. Ah, oh, it's so good. And it's so pretty. This is another, like, screensaver. If I could, like, turn off the HUD, like, with my health and stuff, and just have this be a little thing, I would love this. Like, imagine this as, like, an animated wallpaper. I would love that. Oh, my God. Um, but, yeah. And with that... I think I'm actually going to end this episode here. I feel like this is a good ending spot. It's very pretty, after all. So, in the next episode, we're going to explore the rest of Queen's Gardens. There's not so much left to cover, but there's some stuff. And we're going to get to that. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.